John Mohead is in the house. Uh, how are you, sir? It's good to have you, man. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Good to be here. I, we've we've talked before. We've texted before, but I don't think I've ever met you before. I don't think we have. Yeah, it's been. A, you know, you look a little like Bill Bill Involved. Has anybody ever said that? Uh, no, I've uh, I've had. A couple of others that I, I wasn't so proud to uh, share the same uh, look with, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I would accept no, that. Though. No, you get a little Bill in, Ingvall a look there, uh, and I love the mustache. We're on TV at, um, of course, uh, Supertalk dot FM uh, Watch, and uh, at C Spire Channel seventy. Uh, you heard Mississippi, that opening song there. That, I think yep. that's your latest, isn't it? One of the latest? Uh, yeah, that's on this latest CD we've got called Mograss, um, which, I mean, most of my stuff's always been, you know, in that uh, singer-songwriter, yep. Allman Brothers kind of vein. And uh, during COVID, I got really bored with, uh, you know, a lot of things, as we all did, yeah. and uh, and decided to go in the studio and cut you know, same similar style to what I've been doing, but just doing it with acoustic instruments and mandolins and that sort of thing. It was a tumultuous time for because when you start talking about uh, all of the entertainment that just went dead, cold. Yeah. The creative juices were there. The the need to get out, and you had band members that you that that were out of work. All the casinos shut down their entertainment and everything else. Where are we now, John? Is, is it, it's not back full, from what I understand, but it's getting there. I think it's coming back. I think it's probably you know seventy five percent. Yeah. Uh, you know, some it depends on the the touring artists, like um, Bob Weir, the Grateful Dead. Um, he requires you know proof of vaccination at all of their shows. There, there's a couple of those big touring acts that require they that. Do but, that. Well, some of the other things, too, some of these bands uh, did not get back together. They're gone yeah. one way or the other, financially, or they just decided to give it up. Uh, well, financially, I mean, it's like, you know, you don't make any money on downloads. No. Especially those free downloads. You really don't make any money on that. So the only, I mean, basically, you know, recorded music is a promotional tool for. That's it. You know, for live performing. Yeah. yeah. If you. If you if then I just thought about this and, and Perez, you may want to chime in on this one. If you start looking because both of us have music backgrounds when we first got into uh, in into the business of radio, but you start looking at this, you wonder if some of the people in one of your homeboys, as far as Conway Tweedy on the shores of Moon Lake, mm -hmm. but a lot of a lot of guys in Mississippi, you may never have heard of if we were working with the the schematic we have today as far as uh, the recording industry. Yeah, they never uh, would have made it. Not nationally or internationally. Yeah. I mean, now it's almost like uh, the music music business has gone back to a regional approach. You know, yeah. back you know yeah. when Conway Twitty or whoever they started Great out, point. you know, in a '57 Chevy, uh, you know, going to radio stations, giving away you know, records, and doing local shows, and you know, just um, a, a totally ground roots. Uh, Louisiana approach. Hayride is what yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Ex yeah. yeah exactly. And um, and now, I mean, it's kind of gone back to that. You know, a, a medium level artist can't afford to tour like they like we used to. And um, mm -hmm. so it's and especially like for me, it's like you know, I, I've got out of the game for ten years. And uh, you what know, did for, you do during those that ten year period? Um, how much time do we have? Everything. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> uh, I mean, basically, Bar a bartender has to be part of it. Well, <laughs> no, I, I didn't do that, but it's like um, I had to keep the right brain working, and yeah. um, uh, I had made some money in in the music business, and uh, you know, a actually, the most money I ever made was I had like eight songs on the Young and the Restless. Really? And it paid better than anything else. How about that? Yeah. Well, how old were you then? Uh, well, hell, it was just, you know, 15, 18 years ago. So. 18 years ago. Yeah. But, um, you, you were, your first hit was about, I say first hit, your first song got one when you were 18 years old. I, I wrote a song when I actually, I dropped out of Delta State. I got a song cut, uh, by uh, an act that was on, um, what were they on? Warner Brothers, I think. Mm -hmm. But, um, and it went in the top 20. Actually, they were on Hee Haw. And, and at that point, they, when they played in Hee Haw, that paid like $7,000. I know. 
I mean, I never. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, this is great. It's commensurate to seventy thousand yeah. dollars. I know. Like in those I know. Um, <laughs> hee haw. But you know, yeah. that, that's another animal too, because you know, you had three major networks, and hee haw had a huge viewership. Uh, but you know, fast forward to today, and there's so much video content out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it doesn't pay anywhere near that. You, um, yeah, you almost have to monetize something like TikTok or Instagram or places like that where it's possible yeah. if you can get some views on that one. And there's so many people out there doing this in their basements. Yeah, it's kind of hard. So how are how are the personal appearances going now? Uh, you know, I'm just like slowly kind of easing back into right. it. I, I haven't really uh, pushed hard on it yet, and um, you know, I'll still during my uh, it's, it's, I'm kind of like, you know, Jesus, the missing years. Well, mm -hmm. uh, John, the missing years. Um, uh, I ended up buying this old restaurant on Moon Lake. It's called Catherine's. Oh, you you own Catherine's? Yeah, it had been My shut down for God, like two years. Realize that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've eaten there so many times. Well, quite a few times at Catherine's. Yeah. Some of the best fish around. Um, so you own Catherine's now. Yep. How about that? Yep. So you're going broken more than one way. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now, look. Moon Lake for and a lot of our folks will know this. Moon Lake back in the days when I and I was there and I fished it. It was, you know, had some of the. As a matter of fact, my wife's grandmother had a house there and a bait shop and everything else. Many back in the yeah. old days, and uh, we spent a lot of time there. But um, and Conway Tweedy's uh, uh, lounge was there. Yeah. Tweedy's was in Conway's. It was Conway's. Yeah, and I've heard some stories come out of there. I have too. Uh, um another lula resident uh, lonnie martin he was kind of uh notorious about um my brother-in-law told me out. about uh, yeah. lonnie yeah with uh navy guys from millington uh <laughs> fighting their way out of that place uh, <laughs> we uh, one story was and, and it was a guy who was in the bass fishing club was the local bass fishing mm -hmm. club was a big dude he was a uh, mechanic and um, he got in a fight with him at one time. And, I, and then I, I hear this is true. Some sailors from Millington were there. He pulled the air conditioner out of the wall and threw it at him. Man. So I mean, there's a lot of stories like that hmm. up in Conway's. Now, his parents ran that for a long time. You know, it was like in its waning years when I, uh, you know, when I was a little kid. Yeah. But my grandmother had a, um, a lake house cabin right across I mean, directly across the lake from it. Yeah. So, when, you know, we were six, seven years old. She would take us down there, you know, late in the afternoon, and we'd, you know, eat watermelon or whatever. But we could hear the music from that. And later, years later, I find out it's like uh, Frank Frost, Sam Carr, Jack Johnson, who were the Jelly Roll Kings. Yep. yep. Um, later became world renowned. But they were like the house band. And uh, it was, was one amazing. of those places that had, you know, uh, chicken wire in front of the stage. But I'll never, you know, being seven years old and hear this band do like steel guitar rag. And, you know, I, I didn't know if they were black, white or what. Uh, years later, I find out it's like how, you know, they were doing as much country music as they were blues. You know, I'm, I'm telling folks who want to take some time off and just uh, tour the state. And they don't do that, especially from the central and southern part of the state. Go up to the Delta, play uh, I mean, go up to the Delta and enjoy the, the – see, just see a different world uh, in Moon Lake. We'll talk more. Can you play something on the way out here, sir? Sure. we got another uh, break coming. So here we go. John Mohead, live and in living color. My S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, Mississippi, yeah, better believe it. M I S S I S S I P P I Mississippi, yeah, don't you leave it? Muddy Waters, that's good talk for Faulkner, Elvis. Don't forget, maybe Staples, that is. Oprah, BB, you, Dora Welty, Pascagoula, John Lee Hooker. Don't forget Conway, Twitty. Travel down Highway 61 to a place that we all know. Down by the banks of the muddy river, that's where we're gonna go. Come on down to the levee. 
crawfish getting ready to bring your guitar and sing a song we all know. Come on down to the levee, gather around and maybe we'll just watch the sunset fall in love, fall in love. John Mohan. <clears throat> that's uh, that's on your uh, new CD too, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. Uh, where do you do your recording? Uh, we did most of that at uh, American Sound Studio in Memphis. Uh, Elvis cut there, the Bar Kays. Yeah. I mean, it's got a lot of that. And, and we did some overdubs at the DMI studio in uh, Cleveland, in uh, Delta State. What a rich, rich history of uh, music in the Mississippi Delta. And, and right there, Moon Lake and, and Clarksville is just amazing. Oh, I mean, amazing. draw a 75-mile yeah. radius around it, yeah. and it's just like Elvis, Conway, Twitty, uh, you know, B.B. Uh, <clears throat> King. I mean, just, you know. It's the biggest regret for people like us who grew up there and didn't recognize that what was going on, especially for you being in music in the way you are. But just being, you know, the, on the farm there and also uh, even even not only in Shaw but in Clarksdale, in all the politicking we did on uh, the other side of the railroad track and all those bands were playing back in those days. And who knows who some of those folks were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the barbershop always had some, some uh, music, especially on the weekends, had music going on on the outside. Everybody was picking and grinning and playing the blues out there, and some uh, big names were there. Well, you know, there's a great old story. I'm sure your brother-in-law, Ronnie, knows this mm -hmm. one, too. Uh, there was a fellow that had a uh, service station in Lula. Uh, his, his, last, his name was Mr. Bass. I can't recall his first name. But um, he dabbled in, in the music business, and he recorded Elvis and uh, many others in the service station, like in the service bay in the service station. Uh, he had some, you know, real-to-real -real stuff of Elvis before he ever got with Tom, Colonel Tom. And uh, and that's actually when he got How about that? Supposedly Mr. Bass <clears throat> got him his deal with Colonel yeah. Tom. But, uh, but, you know, a lot of blues guys, and, and he was, you know, friends with you know, Sam Phillips. He would, you know, play Sam some of this stuff and— we uh, at the radio station where I work, uh, upstairs on the second floor, it was in the central building. Uh, the early right, it oh, was yeah. the, the, uh, the African American gentleman, the soul one of the man. very first, the soul man. Yeah. Uh, he's still on YouTube. You go to YouTube, and, and uh, he's still got something on YouTube. He passed huh. away many years ago. But uh, the engineer, one of the great engineers, he was a great guy. He did the show at some, some nighttime, played some country and gospel and some hillbilly music. Some, uh, but. They tell the story that they were uh, some young man came up the back way in the alley, came through the back way, and they were kind of shocked that he was there at 7 o'clock at night. And he was knocking on the, the door, and he came in, and it was a young man who was very, very nice, handed him a record and said, would you play this? Uh, and, and then he tried to talk to him, and, and Doc listened to it, and it was something that he said, you know, it just wasn't that uh, Monroe Brothers. Yeah. So he didn't play it. He just left it there. But a little bit later on, he decided to play it. The guy was Elvis Presley, who was, huh. who was out there marketing his record. So it was just amazing, absolutely amazing. You know, we're almost back to that now, aren't we, yeah. Well, John? Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. but you By know, the way, I have that record, so. Really? Yeah, it's my collection. Yeah. <laughs> you got it insured? Uh, nah, I think I, uh, I think maybe it would be a good idea. You know? I mean, we are in the Farm Bureau building, so you might want to. That's wanna... true. <laughs> that is true. All right, look. I do want to talk to you about this. Uh, we got a big festival coming up there. Steve Azar is part of that. Yep. Uh, it's called the Mighty Roots Music Festival. Mm -hmm. It's in beautiful downtown Stovall, Mississippi. Now, Stovall, for people who don't know this, and GPS will help you out. How do you get there? Uh, well, I go up Highway 1. Uh, but <laughs> Great River Road. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, but it's about, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, six miles west of Clarksdale. Uh, on, of course, Stovall Road, mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's the they're going to be signs and everything out there. Yeah, but it's it's the you know like the the farm headquarters. It's like the Gen yeah. Building, and uh, Howard Stovall has converted uh, the entire headquarters, you know, into uh, it was one of the larger site. plantations back in the old days. Well, and Muddy Waters was discovered there. Muddy Waters That's was exactly recorded right. there. You know, it literally just you know probably. Two miles from the site. So, what has so, he converted it into now? Uh, I think a music venue and conference center. Mm. Um, 
his wife and uh, his wife's family have you know, converted some of the older houses into um, uh, I don't know if they're totally open for B and B business, but yeah. you know, uh, like Hobson, they will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's just, I mean, it's got <clears throat> tons of potential. I mean, um, you know, when you talk about roots music and you know the uh, the seventy mile radius I was talking about around Clarksdale and Moon Lake, it's like you know, Stovall is securely anchoring mm-hmm. that. Um, it's a history, a long, long, long history. Yeah. Now, tell me exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, it starts off on uh, Friday mm-hmm. afternoon, and uh, they've they've got camping, they've got uh, you know food vendors actually doze, which I was I was like that's that was enough to make me play it. Uh, <laughs> doze and Greenville is yeah. they've got their own food truck. They they're have gonna, a food truck. Yeah, I, I was amazed by that. They're uh, doing that and they're doing yeah. salads. They're doing tamales. What more can you want? Mm. Uh, and he's got you know lost pizza, uh, several other ben, uh, food vendors. On site for that, uh, they uh, converted the Stovall store into a um, uh, music venue and lounge. You know, so they'll uh, they can serve cocktails. You know, it's like Ground Zero West. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, you get yeah. Uh, you get Doze and Hicks battling for the Tamale War. We got a we got a <laughs> battle going on, man. You know, Hicks um, before um, Dale Earnhardt passed away. Dale Earnhardt's crew, they were ordering some supposedly like, you know, 50 dozen hot tamales before every race. They were getting shipped. I was always amazed by that. From Hicks? Yeah. 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 I remember when, when Bill Clinton came there, boy, they couldn't keep up with the orders. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tremendous uh, history uh, in that area. Um, who else is going to be playing? Um well, one I'm excited about is uh, Keller Williams. He Keller is uh, kind of on the the jam band set. He's um, he's a lot of fun. He's very entertaining. Mm-hmm. Plays, you know, he's touring constantly. Uh, Raddy Foster, a great songwriter out yeah, of uh, yeah. Nashville. He's had a few hits. Is, uh, when is when was he on yesterday, Perez, or is he on today? As far as uh, with uh, Steve Azar. I forgot when it was. It was either today or tomorrow. No, Keller back. was on last week. Was it? Okay. Huh. Um, uh, another band called uh, uh, National Park Radio, uh, Marcella and Her Lovers, mm. um, Mystic Bowie. Uh, All those? Uh, yeah, he's. I think he's got like uh, like 14 or 15 acts. Uh and Over the two it, days. It'll be on Friday and all Saturday. And Saturday. When, when does it start on Friday? Uh, I think around 5 o'clock. About 5 o'clock. Time. So to... if you want more information, is it on the web somewhere? Yeah, it's uh, MightyRootsMusicFestival.com. And what is the entry fee? Do we know? I think the single day is like $30, and then he has a VIP package. Yeah. and yeah, But uh, Wade uh, Incorporated, you know, the tractor folks. They're, John they're, Deere. They're, they're, all the got, way. Yeah. Big Green. Big Green Tractors, yes. <laughs> they are the major sponsors for it. How about that? The uh, have you um, have you got any dates book outside or in the general area in the, in the state right now as far as uh, after to after the uh, Monty Roots Festival? The, I think the next thing we've got is the Greenville Hot Tamale Festival. How about that? <laughs> it's like- but if somebody wants to book you, do, do you have a band, or are you still? Yeah, you? yeah, we do. Well, we, when it's the band, it's it's billed as Mohead. You know? I got you. And then yeah. when it's just me doing the singer songwriter thing, it's John. You know. So but you're open. You're too. open for some additional dates. Oh I'm yeah, sure. yeah. And if you want more information, go to uh, Mohead, Mohead Music. Yep. Facebook page. Yep. Instagram. All all that. all the above. Yep. Um, have you thought about being on The Voice or one of those? Mm, no. Uh, you know. No, I, it's um, you know, I, I opened for some shows for Bob Dylan years ago. After I did that, it's like okay, I can retire now because it's you know <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. Can you play us something out here, sir? Sure. Let's have it. John Mohead, ladies and gentlemen. Um, since you always talk about Lula, I think I got to do something. Let's do it. She's on a train leaving Lula. It takes you one way down the line On a train leaving Lula And say goodbye one last time 
They made their way to the station With silent conversation They stay with Aunt Molly Down on the coast They saw his daughter's eyes shine So turn one last time Look at the love she'll leave